1v1 mode in Rocket League is brutal. To succeed in ones, you need three things. Good mechanics, excellent game sense, and most of all, you need a bulletproof killer mentality. Most Rocket League players don't have all three of those things, so they avoid the 1v1 playlist completely. Yet few things in the game can match the intensity of a 1v1 matchup. And since the beginning of competitive Rocket League, the best players in the world have clashed in the 1v1 arena, competing in show matches and tournaments for large prize pools of cash. The depth in tactics, skill, and excitement for pro 1v1s makes it the closest thing Rocket League has to other games like Smash or Street Fighter. When it comes to hosting pro 1v1 show matches, the definitive leader in the scene is Johnny Boy, whose Twitch channel became a live battleground for top players since early 2016. Year after year, Johnny developed his talent as a caster and now holds one of the few RLCS spots where he's often charged with calling the premier matches. No one in the world has seen as many 1v1s as he has. So I sat him down to tell me about the greatest games he's ever witnessed. He told me of three different series that blew his mind. And today, we'll start with one of those, covering every detail from the history between the players down to the final enthralling moments of the games themselves. This is the story behind the best 1v1 series ever played. So Fairy Peak is the greatest 1v1 player of all time. He's had such a long period of being at the top and not just being one of the best, but being the best. He's one of the few players who's like separated himself from the rest of the pack throughout history. At the time of this match, he was the greatest of all time. I think still to this day, he's the greatest of all time. But when this match against Khaled took place, he was coming off a period of inactivity in 1v1. Fairy Peak told me that he's taking an indefinite break from once. Not sure if he'll come back or when he'll come back. You know, he's given a lot to the game mode over the years and he wants to like just leave it for a while. So this match for Fairy Peak was kind of like a comeback to 1v1. Nobody really knew what to expect. Khaled was the first player outside of Europe and North America who really had a claim for being best in the world in 1v1. He kind of came out of nowhere after Fairy Peak stepped away from the 1v1 world, Khaled quickly filled the gap that was left behind. In Johnny Boy's Salt Mine tournament, at the time the most prestigious 1v1 event, Khaled had gone undefeated throughout the entire thing, winning it all. And that, you know, put him best in the world without a shadow of a doubt. And he kind of stayed best in the world for, for a while. You know, there are, there are definitely some players close to him, but most people considered him the best. The perfect gameplay, the perfect mentality to win in high pressure situations 1v1. At the time when he played Fairy here, he was the favorite, he was the best in the world, and everybody expected him to win. So if Fairy Peak had retired from ones, why on earth was he staring across the pitch at the current best 1v1 player in the world? Well, this was a special event, but it wasn't a 1v1 event, strictly speaking. It was called Fusion, and as you may have guessed from the name, it was a unique tournament in which teams had to play a combination of different game modes, 3v3, 2v2, and 1v1, rather than just the standard 3v3 used in professional events. Vitality Fairy Peak team had already won the 3v3 and the 2v2 portions, so all that was left was the 1v1 portion. Vitality's Fairy Peak against Sandro Gaming's Ocalad in the final. They could have actually used substitutions between matches, something that Fairy Peak and Vitality did in the previous round when Fairy Peak was actually losing to uh, apparently Jack. They subbed in Alpha 54, Fairy Peak's teammate at the time, and Alpha was able to win the series. But Fairy Peak told Khaled, hey, even if you're beating me, I'm gonna play it out because he knew how important it was. He knew that people wanted to see him play Khaled for an entire series start to finish. He gave the fans what they wanted. He gave Khaled what he wanted. I think at the end of the day, that's probably he wanted as well. He wanted to say, what, what really happens if I just play a best of seven against the best player? Let's just give it a go. Here we go, game number one. Game one, Khaled does what Khaled does. He ends up being a few goals down early, but no problem. Back to the corner, Khaled sets oh. up, launches. He just grinds out goals after goals after goals. That's five now in a row. Fairies have been unable to answer. Wins it pretty comfortably. Khaled did this to everybody he played. Once he got into a rhythm, his bounce dribbles were unstoppable. His challenge game was immaculate. His 50-50s were called 0-100s because he just won them all. It wasn't honestly too surprising to see him win a game in dominant fashion like this. But this has just been Khaled straight up outplaying Fairy. You know, another game like this happens. 
do you just give Alpha a go to see if, you know, someone has a, a decent matchup against this guy? Because yeah, the list of people who have a good matchup against Khaled is already pretty small to begin with. But what was really cool to see in game two, Fairy Peak switched to the Batmobile. Fairy Peak had played game one in the Fennec. The Fennec is one of the most widely used cars by pros to this day, while longer cars such as the Batmobile had fallen out of favor with most of the player base by this point in Rocket League history. It's a car, especially in 1v1, that's been rarely used. One of the problems with playing longer cars in 1v1s is that when you try and flick the ball, it might go to the moon. But for his entire reign of dominance in ones, he played a lot of that in the Batmobile. Fairy Peak was so good in the Batmobile back in the day because he was one of the few players that could control his flicks, which used to be a big part of the 1v1 meta. Just making the Batmobile look easy. Yeah, it fit him perfectly. It allowed him to be very aggressive and it made it hard for people to read him. The modern attacking meta in 1v1 is bounce dribbling, which is much safer and more effective than flicking. By switching to the Batmobile mid-series, Fairy Peak had turned back the clock not just for himself as the returning 1v1 GOAT, but also the entire strategy of the game mode. To see him bring the Batmobile back was definitely extremely nostalgic. And then to see it work was, you know, I guess the beginning of, you know, maybe something is happening here. Khaled, you know, main success so far is still from those bounce dribbles. Everything else, a little bit more difficult so far in this oh, game. Very rough gets Fairy Peak's not interested in letting Khaled start another one of those bounce dribbles. Fairy Peak immediately shot that down. Fairy Peak dominating the midfield in this game. Fairy Peak's back in the Batmobile. He's back to his roots. We might have a series in our hands. That's game two in the bag for Fairy Peak and Vitality. All he needed was a quick trip to the garage. Batmobile is in the building. Games three and four were very Khaled favorite again. He, just like in game one, got into that rhythm where he did not look playable. He just seemed like he had full control. He was running the show. He was just running Fairy Peak about the pitch. Like I said earlier, this is what he did to everyone. This is what Khaled was known for. He just took over series. He just looked completely unstoppable. So, you know, Fairy Peak getting that one game win in the Batmobile looked like it was all he was gonna get. Khaled is just dismantling Fairy here in game four. Is it time, <laughs> Johnny? Is it time? There was no sign of Khaled relenting, no sign of his play dropping off at all. When uh, Alpha's looking at this one and <laughs> seeing what Khaled is doing to Fairy, he's probably saying, you know what, Fairy, uh, I've got to be right back. To imagine anyone at this time coming back from 3 1 down in a best of seven against a Khaled playing like this it was just impossible. Never mind Fairy Peak, who's been inactive in the game mode and was actually losing in the semi-finals prior to this grand final and having to be subbed out for his teammate. It, 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 everything pointed at Khaled winning this series 4-1, maybe 4-2 if he you know, gives Fairy Peak another game feel because he feels bad. It was very one-sided in games 3 and 4 in Khaled's favor. Could be the last game of the tournament, the last game of the series. Um, are we going to see another one for Fairy? It looks like it. Ready's up and... I respect that. He wants to give Khaled the full best of seven. And that's when it happened. Game five, Khaled's winning six to four, 30 seconds left. Yep, Khaled, six four. That demo might have just secured the game and the series for him. Takes to the air this time. Very gonna reach very deep in that bag of tricks. Reese. Oh! Scores. oh. And who said Fairy Peak doesn't have the fancy mechanics? He just never has to use them. Khaled may have just unlocked Fairy's strap card. Be careful, he says in the quick chat. Not even quick chat, he's typing all this out. Fairy's hilarious. 6 5. And Khaled, hang on. Now needs one more. He tries to set himself up. He's got four boost. Can he make it work? Oh! Very big refuses to lose after such a beautiful goal before it. We've gone in the complete opposite direction with a double 50 50. You don't get any uglier than that, but they both count. Very big just wanted to remind everybody that you don't get to win tournaments in ones unless you're willing to just absolutely send it. 
it's no longer time for Freypeak to try and get little wins and little exchanges. He's going all in. He, he knows he's got a score, otherwise the series is over. So he goes for a full pitch air dribble flip reset. In early 2020, it was quite rare to see a flip reset in a high level 1v1 match. So to see Fairy Peak pull one out in the final 20 seconds of a grand final where he's losing to Khaled, this is peak Rocket League. But then to follow it up with the not quick chat, but typed chat, be careful, exclamation mark, was uh, just one of the best moments that I can remember in 1v1 history, or just Rocket League history in general. I mean, who even thinks to do this? Khaled must have known that something was coming his way when he saw that. Fairy's not done. Fairy with four boosts did not have many options, so he chose his strongest one, and that was just brute power. Wants to win no it in way. regulation. No way. What? Fairy peak. He warned him. Khaled wasn't careful. That's one of the most legendary things I've seen in this game. Be careful. It, it really is unimaginable to, to think of this as, as a possibility, but Fairy Peak was playing with no fear. He just went completely all in three times in a row and it paid off in this instance. He just has the willpower to survive against all odds. He's been, you know, really up against it at times in this series. Every single play is just getting pressured so hard by Khaled, but now he's finding edges in the matchup. He's seeing gaps to exploit. And it's up to Khaled now to try and stabilize because Fairy Peak is reaching the highest level that he has had all day. Fairy Peak ahead, 3-1. What a shot that is. The momentum swings in Fairy Peak's favor. He comes back from behind in game five to win it and just wins game six with that momentum that he's built up for himself. He had all the confidence at this point. He's landed outside the goal. That is an open net for Fairy, and he's not wasting any time. 4-1, the scoreline is swinging farther and farther away from Khaled, and I don't think we've ever seen this. Except maybe there's one series I remember where Khaled looked like he might be about to be reverse swept by Astral. And hopefully for Fairy's sake, the series doesn't go like that one did, because after Astro is five goals up, about to complete the reverse sweep on Khaled. Khaled got the five goal comeback and won the game by three goals. So, long way to go before that can happen. Oh, wow, what a touch by Khaled off the inside of the post to keep control. Khaled starting to doubt himself. He was that close to winning. And now Fairy Peak, the GOAT, is coming back at him. He is being hyper-aggressive as well whenever Khaled is getting control, but he doesn't have a control oh. of this one. Towards the end of game six, Khaled began to bounce back from the be careful incident. And it was clear that even though Fairy won the game, the series itself was not going to be decided that easily. It was headed for game seven. Fairy Peak versus Khaled, the greatest of all time versus the best right now. Who's going to take it? Both players were bringing their best gameplay in the last game. Then Khaled had a bit of time after that game six to get back to his normal ability after a bit, getting a bit rattled. He looked like he was, uh, you know, back in control, but Fairy Peak was right there with him. He may have caught Fairy off guard. Oh, has he got the double? He does, Khaled! With half the game gone, equalizes. Game seven that everybody wanted. The closest game of the series, right at the end, where it's completely tied, uh, very, very close all the way through, completely tied 5-5. The ball does a full lap of the pitch on zero seconds, just to add a little spice uh, to an already crazy series to witness. And into overtime we go. It's a dream for the neutral fan. All on the line. Tournament Grand Final, Game 7 Overtime. There's a good chance Fairy Peak would pressure this. Fairy Peak doesn't like to back off to his corner after a kickoff. So Khaled tries to counter that by immediately jumping. That went into Fairy Peak's half the game's over. So Fairy Peak, had, he had to win that 50-50. That's exactly what he did. Fairy had no boost, but he still goes for it. He had to invest everything there just to reach it. Khaled had the boost to recover with. Pretty even position. Khaled's faked it! And Fairy Peak scores! Immediate compliment from Khaled. So gracious in defeat. But Fairy Peak, with a huge mind game, wins the series. He is the greatest to ever do it.
for Fairy Peak to do this just reaffirmed his status as the GOAT. Who does this? Who goes away from 1v1 and then comes back and beats a player like Khaled in the streak he's on? Yeah, uh, that's that's only Fairy Peak is doing things like that. Uh, the sportsmanship from Khaled really just made it perfect as well. Immediately dropping a nice one in the chat. Even after a crushing defeat where you've been mind game in the grand final by the GOAT, losing your status as the undefeated, undefeatable 1v1 best of the time. All he, all he can say is GG's to a player that he has the utmost respect for. That for me is why this series is as amazing as it is. We got to witness two players, two of the best in the world, just enjoying a series against each other.